In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the grace and peace of the Lord be with you all. And with your spirit. And with your life. Uh, today, we commemorate the life and ministry of St. Cyril of Alexandria. He was a 5th century bishop, he was the, uh, the patriarch of, of the Church of Alexandria, which is the northern coast of Egypt. Uh, he was a, a vigorous defender of the faith, and as, and, and as he has done that, throughout his ministry, he was always in conflict with uh, folks who raised up different types of heresies. One in particular was with uh, Nestorius, and he was the patriarch of Constantinople. He taught that uh, Mary was the mother of Christ. They are uh, presupposed. While uh, the church, particularly Cyril, uh, taught that Mary was the mother of God, they are both. And so they had a big church council in Ephesus, and it was uh, determined uh, that Nestorius was a heretic, and that belief was pronounced as heresy. Uh, Twenty years later, the council of Ephesus, in the year 431, uh, Church bishops uh, resolved, uh, uh, the church bishops, through the writings and the thoughts of St. Cyril, uh, determined that Christ had two natures. And so uh, his work on the incarnation, uh, but also the human dignity of the person, uh, made him a doctor. Lord Jesus, you have shown us the way to the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you have given us the consolation of your truth. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the good shepherd, leading us into everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, who made the bishop, St. Cyril of Alexandria, an invincible champion of the divine motherhood of the most blessed Virgin Mary, grant and pray that we who believe she is truly the mother of God may be saved through the incarnation of Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. reading from the book of Genesis. <coughs> Abram told Sarah, your maid is in your power. Do to her whatever you please. Sarah then abused her so much that Hagar ran away from her. The Lord's messenger found her by a spring in the wilderness, the spring on the road to Shur, and he asked, Hagar, maid of Sarah, where have you come from? And where are you going? She answered, I am running away from my mistress Sarah. But the Lord's messenger told her, Go back to your mistress and submit to her abusive treatment. I will make your descendants so numerous, added the Lord's messenger, that there will be many to come. Besides, the Lord's messenger said to her, You are now pregnant, and you shall bear a son. You shall name him Ishmael. For the Lord has heard you, God has answered you. This one shall be the wild ass of a man, his hand against everyone, and everyone's hand against him, in opposition to all his kin, shall be in camp. Hagar bore Abram a son, and Abram named the son whom Hagar bore him Ishmael. Abram was eighty-six years old when Hagar bore him. The word of the Lord. 
Thanks to God. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. Who can tell the mighty deeds of the Lord or proclaim all his praises? Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. Blessed are they who observe what is right, who do always what is just. Remember us, O Lord, as you favor your people. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. Visit me with your saving help, <coughs> that I may see the prosperity of your chosen one. Rejoice in the joy of your people and glory with your inheritance. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is so good. Jesus said to his disciples, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only the one who does the will of my Father in heaven. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name? Did we not drive out demons in your name? Did we not do mighty deeds in your name? Then I will declare to them solemnly, I never knew you. Depart from me, you evildoers. Everyone who listens to these words of mine and acts on them will be like a wise man who built his house on rock. The rain fell, the floods came, and the winds blew and buffeted the house. But it did not collapse. It had been set solidly on rock. And everyone who listens to these words of mine but does not act on them will be like a fool who built his house on sand. The rain fell, the floods came, and the winds blew and buffeted the house, and it collapsed and was completely ruined. When Jesus finished these words, the crowds were astonished at his teaching, for he taught them as one having authority, and not as their scribes. The Gospel of the Lord. National Public Radio uh, recently reported on a small tech company that has developed state-of-the-art visual recognition technology to identify and analyze images and videos. The company's work has already found a big market in hospitals and clinics around the country. And then the startup recently got a big break, a government contract worth millions of dollars. Work began on a project in great secrecy. The engineers and designers working on it became uneasy. The mysterious lack of details on the work were raising concerns. And finally, they mustered up the courage to confront their bosses. Were they building weapons? The company's managers finally leveled with them. They were. Their technology would be used by the Defense Department to guide drone attacks against ISIS. And after several tense meetings, some technicians resigned from the company. They saw themselves as conscientious tech objectors who believe that they are accountable for the good and evil that may result from their work. They couldn't rationalize what they were doing simply for their own advancement and livelihood. They believed that they had a moral and ethical responsibility to make sure that the technology they develop be used for the common good of society. We have this parable today from Matthew's Gospel of the house built on rock. 
And Jesus asks us to consider how solid is the foundation of our ethical and moral lives and our values by which we live our lives. Lives built on the sand of wealth and prestige and power will eventually collapse in the storms that will eventually come. But lives founded on the principles of justice and respect and generosity will not only survive, but prosper. And so as we all conduct the business of our lives, take the long view. Invest your time and wealth in the technologies of God. Give of your time and talent for the good of God's people and God's creation. Joining together as members of the family of God, we present our petitions to the Father. For our Holy Father, Pope Francis, and all the clergy, may the Lord bless them and purify them as they shepherd their people. We pray to the Lord. For those in leadership throughout the world who are working to foster peace and justice for their people, may the Holy Spirit bless their efforts. We pray to the Lord. For children throughout the world, both the unborn and those already among us, and those who protect and care for them, we pray to the Lord. For those in our parish community who suffer from illness, mental or physical, may God strengthen and comfort them, we pray to the Lord. For all who have died in Hope of prayer. May they rest in the kingdom of God. We pray to the Lord. For Anna DeLuca, for whom we remember especially at this Mass, and for what or for whom should we pray for today? I'd like to pray for the members of the uh, armed forces, especially. Uh, no people who will, will be inducted in the Naval Academy today. And I'm going to pray for a neighbor of mine, Maureen Way, who is in uh, boot camp at, in, in, uh, in Marines. And he is going through, uh, with his peers, a very physical and psychological challenge over the next couple of days. So let's pray for their safety as well as those family members who support them in their career in the military. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Heavenly Father, we offer in these prayers, especially those that reside in the depths of our hearts, knowing that your mercy is beyond our understanding. We ask that you fulfill our needs as only as you know them through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this bread to offer you, proof of the earth and work of your hands. It will become for us the bread of life. We 
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for your goodness we have this line to offer you with the divine and what in your hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. And my friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Look, with favor, O Lord, we pray in the offerings we set upon this sacred altar, born of the feast day of Saint Cyril, that bestowing on us your pardon, our oblations may give honor to your name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and the salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Jesus Christ. For as in the festival of St. Cyril of Alexandria, you bid your church rejoice. So too, you strengthen her by the example of his holy life. Teach her by his words of preaching and keep her safe and answer to his prayers. And so with all the angels and saints, we praise you forever. Holy, 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 Lord God. Have our glory and glory. Hosanna. You are indeed holy and be glorified, O God, who love the human race, and who always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son present in our midst when we are gathered by his love, and when, as once for the disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the last supper, he took bread and said a blessing. He broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when the supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more, giving you thanks. He gave it to his friends and said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for me for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess the resurrection. Amen. Therefore, Holy Fathers, we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross, to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again, as we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the oblation of your church, in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us. And grant that by the power of the Spirit of your love, we may be counted now until the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. Lord, renew your church, which is in the Archdiocese of Baltimore, by the light of the gospel. Strengthen the bonds of unity between the faithful and the pastors of your people, together with Francis, our Pope, William, our Bishop, and the whole orders of, of, of bishops, that in a world torn by strife, your people may shine forth as a sign of unity and peace. 
Remember our sisters and brothers who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ, and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. And bid them to rejoice in the light of your face, and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. Grant to us also that when, when our earthly pilgrimage is done, we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. There, in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with St. Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, the Martyrs, St. Cyril of Alexandria, and with all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, forever and ever. We pray the words that Jesus himself once prayed. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but to the curse of our evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress and anxiety as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith and courage of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, to live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer one another the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you hold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Happy are we called to the supper of the Lord, I am not worthy to shed my heart, but only see the Lord, and my soul shall be.
Let us pray. We unify the sacred mysteries. We humbly pray, O Lord, that following the example of St. Cyril, we may strive to profess what he believed and to practice what he taught through Christ our Lord. Amen. This is an observation to me. Uh, I've noticed uh, uh, for our weekend liturgies and uh, particularly our daily mass liturgies, we have some new faces. Uh, I just want to extend my welcome to you who are visiting with us uh, or who are uh, looking around for a parish to settle in. So I just want to express my welcome and our hospitality from St. Louis to the Exeter. And I do have a personal bias that our daily mass group is the best group in this part of Ann Arbor County. <laughs> the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you. Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace.